How's everybody feeling today? Good? OK, cool. So hi, everyone. My name is Zifan Li. I'm a senior software engineer from Intuit. So don't be fooled by my dog stickers behind my laptop. We're not just powering Pet Store. A lot of our product QuickBooks, we're powering small businesses around the world. So let's get started about adding TypeScript to your GraphQL server. So every time that I feel like adding a new technology to your code stack is more like an onboarding process or hiring process for your new teammates. So in this talk, you'll hear about meet and greet the candidate, TypeScript, what value it brings, and what kind of benefit it can bring to your team. Second is the trial period. It's kind of like the interview process. We want to try it out first to see if it's a fit with the team culture, with the code stack. And then last, I will go over the migration strategy of the entire code base when we actually decided to commit to hire TypeScript to be part of our code base members. OK, so first, that's me, the candidate, TypeScript. So by show of hands, can you raise your hand if you've heard of or used TypeScript before? OK, cool. There, there are a lot of you guys. Just to be inclusive, can you raise your hand if you have not heard about TypeScript but are excited about hearing about it? Cool. It's a nice afternoon stretch for everyone. Um, so TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, and it provides static typing. So just as a quick example, this is an uh, example case of a TypeScript file where you can see there's a function called greeter, and then the input is person, and it's typed to be string. So the only input that's going to be accepted is a string value. So what would happen if we change the string to a numeric value? Then TypeScript is going to catch that and throw an error. So if you use Visual Studio Code, this is what the error is going to look like. This is going to say that number is uh, not compatible with parameter type string. OK, so as you can see from the example, static typing is one of TypeScript skills. And also because a superset of JavaScript, it also supports the latest JS features, browser compatibility. And because it's developed by Microsoft, Microsoft Visual Studio Code already provides a lot of great tooling in terms of making type, doing TypeScript easier. And in terms of adoption, there are over 2,000 companies that are actively using TypeScript right now. So it's very popular in the tech industry. But will it be a good fit for your team? OK, so next, then we're at the trial period. So let's give it a try. So our team at QuickBooks Payroll, we built a GraphQL server using Apollo server. So this is an example about a very tentative file structure of what it looks like. So right here in the schema folder, you can see there are company, employees, pay schedule. There are different areas that are potentially owned by different teams. So let's start small, because we just want to try it out right, in our code base. So my strategy first is to take a small file or just a small folder and I try to refactor every single JavaScript file there into TypeScript. So one of the principles that I'd like to use is um, if the file has very few imports, then that will be an ideal candidate because we don't have to deal with those extra dependency typing stuff. So once we pick start small and we're ready to refactor before that, I think it's really important to set the goals about trying it out. Um, for example, think about the questions about what are problems that you want TypeScript to solve ahead of time, and then kind of define a success metric of, for example, how many bugs that you want TypeScript to catch at development time. Also think about what could be the potential things that is stopping your whole team from using TypeScript. For example, if it's learning curve, then I think it would be helpful to document your learning experience, like the problems that you're running into, and the resources that you rely on to solve your problem. So once your goal is set, and then let's look into how to incrementally change that small folder or file into TypeScript. So the first step, straightforward, add TypeScript to your code base. There are a lot of resources out there. Uh, TypeScript official website provides great tutorials and resources in terms of this. But essentially, you would want to define a config file that's called tsjson. Uh, tsconfig.json. And then you want to rename the .js files in a specific area to .ts. So this is an example of what the tsconfig file looks like. So it's going to output the compiled, type, compiled TypeScript code in JavaScript into build folder, and allow JS is set to be true. The property of allow JS set to be true allows the coexistence of TypeScript file and JavaScript file. It's a great step of having both of them exist in the same first place. And then after that, um, at the end of the first step, you would want to check, do a checkpoint to make sure that your server still start up, nothing is broken, and your test still passes. So after that step, the second one is into the tsconfig.json file. We want to set the no implicit any to be true. 
So what this does and how why the last steps works is that when you're renaming TypeScript files to TS, what it actually does is put any type in every single line of your code. So setting, reinforcing that no implicit any to be true actually forces you to start adding types. So let's take a look about what the, are the types that we want to add. So first of all, when you start a starter server, you're probably going to see errors that are being thrown of types being missing for extra dependencies. But TypeScript uh, community um, is really good at handling this, as there are a lot of tons of external packages just for the types for some popular ones. In this example, Lodash, to solve this, you can just install it at type slash Lodash to solve this issue. But if you have any like internal dependency that do, does not have type declaration at the step you would add the type declaration. And in addition to that, we also want to add type to an actual file that you want to refactor. So this is an example of a resolver file. So as you can see, the company uh, query is kind of returning back a list of employees for the employees field. And then you started thinking, then when I'm setting the type definition, it's probably going to be um, a list of objects that is in the same shape as the employee's type. So remember that GraphQL is a type language, so we already have that defined summary in a schema. So how can we convert it to TypeScript types and use it for our type definition? So there's a great tool called GraphQL Code Generator that you get a feed in the schema file for your GraphQL server, and then what it gives back to you is actually generated types that you can import directly in your TypeScript file. So coming back to the resolver, all you need to do is just to implement, import the resolver type from the generated resolver types, and then you're done with this step. Before that, make sure that your server starts up and your test passes. So then it comes to the last step is to enable strict typing. So same thing in a tsconfig.json, there's a strict option that you can flip it on to set it to be true. What it means is that it enforces no implicit any, but also enforces null checks, bind call apply, functional types, more strict type checking. So this is the stage where you would add more types, more stricter types on top of the types that you already added on t um, at step two. So after this, you already been finishing um, with this file uh, or folder refactor, and then you are ready to go. So after that tryout period, um, what comes next is really to evaluate if um, refactoring this specific folder really fulfills your goal and discuss it as a team. Um, so one of the things that you might discuss are, one, is that if it really fits the need, I think it's really important because different code base does have different use cases and problems that we want to solve. Uh, for example, one case is that I discovered while I was doing this um, exploration is that we are building it using Apollo Server. So Apollo Server also have types that comes with the packages. So in one file, um, we're actually overriding a private variable inside a JavaScript class. But we weren't noticing it until we imported a type, and then it reinforces good coding practices based on a contract between packages. So that's one example. Also, because it's strongly typed GraphQL, and also the easy generation of the different types are also could be a strong reason in terms of using TypeScript. And then you would make a decision collectively as a team. And also, there are a lot of ways about collecting feedbacks across if you feel like your code base is owned by different teams. Um, and you would want to do surveys or meetings or just to collect the feedback to make sure that everyone's on the same page. So after you're done with that, and if you decided that you want to move on to migrate the whole code base into TypeScript, then that comes to our third step. So don't be um, fooled by this GIF. It's not done yet, this is just the beginning. Uh, so there are various strategies that we can do this. So for example, we just refactored one folder, right? And all we need to do, we, why not just refactor like the whole, the rest of the repository into TypeScript files? So that is one solution. You can do it in the same way that we did it, like first to update just the um, JS files to TS, second, kind of restrict the type more by enforce the no implicit any, and then the third step is to do the strict typing. So there are pros and cons that comes with this approach. For example, one of the pros is that you get to think holistically about what your code base and define commonly, commonly used types that can be shared everywhere across different teams. But one of the cons is that if you think about phase two, it's kind of just adding all the types to everything, every single file in a repository. So that would cause a huge 
uh, pull requests. And potentially, if there are other things that is working in parallel, it might cause a lot of conflict, so it's not great for productivity. But if you're working with smaller code bases, I think this is a great option in terms of it's just um, fast, faster iteration so that the whole code base can get the benefit of TypeScript at the same time. And then the other strategy that I can think of is just to do it update by area. So for example, today um, I do the employees folder and I refactor everything to TypeScript where all the other JavaScript files still exist. And then you do like another folder and you do it gradually until the whole um, repository is replaced with TypeScript code. So for this approach, there are a lot of pros because it keeps the code refactoring isolation. Like messing up with one team's code it does not necessarily affect the other team's code base. Um, but there are definitely cons that comes with this one. For example, I would imagine the, the first refactoring was going to be huge because it imports all the common utility files, for example, loggers. Um, and then in the first very first PR, you kind of just have to take care of every single import and kind of declare all the types first. And then the work is going to become easier gradually, but still there are significant stuff that we need to figure out in the first stage. Um, there are also a lot of other strategies. You can do a mix of these two, but I think what I would, I would advocate for more is just to um, keep it straightforward, keep it really catered to your own team's needs, because essentially um, it's based on your team's resource, productivity, and your team goal. So just to wrap up, um, I think one takeaway I do want to point out is um, there are so many different approaches of refactoring code bases. And there are so many tools that are about type checking and about TypeScript. So uh, figure out what's, what works best for your team, I think is the most important thing. And the other thing that I put kind of as, as a sub point, because I want to use the T and S from TypeScript or takesaways, so it needs to be a plural. So experiment and iterate is also extremely important, because just by doing file by file, you keep the cost really low. Like, it doesn't hurt anything if you just one file in TypeScript, and it makes a lot easier to convince other people to use TypeScript. Yeah, so that'll be all. So feel free to contact me if you have any questions. So thank you very much. Thank you.